the first photo shows me right before I reverse dyed it, but I finally caved in. Just roll her up. Oh no, I lost a tomato. Beautiful. I will be completely blunt with you guys. Hey there, you guys. Good morning. Oh my gosh, let me notch down. Perfect. Please ignore what's going on back here. I really need to clean the kitchen up. I'm going to do that after I have my coffee, which I'm in the middle of making right now. Got my creamer. It's like my favorite part of my morning. But on that note, today's video is going to be a what I eat in a day. So starting out with the same coffee that I make literally every single day. An espresso with some froth creamer. I like to use the Natural Bliss Vanilla, and then I mix it in with the Trader Joe's Blueberry Almond Drink. It's really, really good. If you guys like the Dunkin' Donuts Blueberry Coffee, highly recommend this because it tastes pretty much exactly like it. But today's what I eat in a day is actually what I eat in a day on a calorie deficit. I'm just working on a slight calorie deficit right now of just 200 calories. I'm just gonna see how it feels there for a while if I you know continue to see results i'm not gonna bother to push it down because obviously it's gonna be more sustainable and a little bit more fun to stay at a higher calorie level while still hopefully losing some fat but if i need to i'll push it down to a deficit of maybe like 300 calories but that's all to say i did want to give a little quick disclaimer slash trigger warning i am going to be talking calories in this video along with counting macros so if that is something that triggers you please feel free to skip this video as you guys know i used to not do that for a while i was just mainly on counting protein but I decided to do some work to repair my metabolism which was honestly so shot and over the last three months I had worked on reverse dieting which is slowly going up in calories to your maintenance level I am not a fitness expert I am not a nutritionist so I don't necessarily want to dive super deep into all of that stuff because I just I don't want to say the wrong thing but all of this has worked for me basically I figured out my maintenance calories if you guys want to know how to figure that out I will link a couple of TikToks below but basically yeah I've been working on slowly increasing my calories to get up to that maintenance level which ended up being so many more calories than I'd been consuming. I essentially had damaged my metabolism by continuously eating too little calories for years, which would put me in a binge restrict cycle. And right now I feel really, really amazing. I'm eating more than I've ever eaten before, even in my deficit. So I'm definitely loving it, which is where the apprehension of pushing my deficit too far down goes because I just don't want to fall into that pattern again. So I just want to keep it a little bit more conservative because I am still very mindful of damaging my metabolism. And also I've done so much work to repair my relationship with food that I just I don't want to fall into that mentality of good food versus bad food and stuff again so it's definitely a journey right now I'm definitely still learning as I go which again is why I don't want to like dive too deep into like the metrics and science behind everything because I just I don't want to say the wrong thing but just at a very surface level I have reverse dieted I've increased my calories by a lot my maintenance calories are actually 2130 which is way more than I ever thought I should be allowed to eat so when I figured that out and reversed up to that I have been loving it in fact there were some days I was too full to hit my maintenance calories so then by that logic a 200 calorie deficit is 1930 calories which is totally doable and I'm still more than able to eat foods that I enjoy I am still focused on high protein so we're still gonna see that in this video when I was at maintenance calories I was aiming for a one-to-one -one ratio which is basically one gram of protein per pound but since I'm in a deficit I've dropped that to about 0.8 grams of protein per pound just because it was difficult to fit all of that protein in and 0.8 grams per pound is more than sufficient to maintain and grow muscle so I decided to cut myself a break a little bit there but I am still definitely eating high protein I try to hit a range between 132 to 140 grams of protein if I can go over 140 grams then that's great but I never want to go below that 132 grams of protein for anybody who's wondering the way that I try track this and I will say this comes with a huge huge disclaimer but the app that I use is still lifesome I mentioned this in videos in the past I do like it the only thing is this really 
super underestimates your calories even if you like plug in that you want to gain weight it still gave me a target calorie number that was 300 calories below what my actual maintenance should be so just keep that in mind you're constantly going to see this say that you're going over in calories but you just kind of have to ignore that and go with what's actually correct for your body so this is really truly just a tool to track your food and hit your numbers that you have recorded elsewhere the other change i've made to like my nutrition and stuff is that i'm also tracking carbs i was not getting in enough carbs so i'm making a real conscious effort to really fill out that number and hit my carbs especially with how much i'm working out how much i'm lifting that was definitely one of the things that needed to be tweaked and i feel like I've been doing a pretty good job I mean as far as what's on the menu for today because I like to plan out my meals ahead of time I am gonna hit carbs and then today I'm also gonna go over in protein and then I'm gonna be a little under in fat but I'm okay with that because most days I go over in fat and under in carbs so I like that this day kind of helps balance out those other days but yeah I'm just gonna start off with my coffee for right now even though I do eat breakfast now now that I'm not intermittent fasting I'm still not hungry for it first thing in the morning so my day still definitely starts out with a cup of coffee okay so I already took these actually before I started filming I actually forgot for a little bit that I was supposed to be filming today but before my coffee I did take my seed daily symbiotic this is both a probiotic and a prebiotic I'm not gonna dig super deep into this because that review is coming I told you guys I would do a one month review right now I'm on week three of this so it's on its way but I will say so far I do like it I have noticed some positive changes but again we'll dig more into that in the official review but I just wanted to do a little quick chat really quick on my experience with reverse dieting and what my body personally experienced because I know that it can be a really really scary thing to try because a lot of us are conditioned especially those of us who grew up in like the 90s and early 2000s where ultra skinny was in but yeah especially for those of us who grew up in that era we are conditioned to think that we should eat as little calories as possible you hear the number 1200 calories being thrown around a lot which I've come to learn is far too little calories for a grown woman so reverse dieting to eat more calories just sounds really really scary and it sounds like you're gonna gain a ton of weight if you do that and I will let you guys know when I reverse dieted at the time I was eating like maybe 1700 calories and I thought that that was a lot of calories I thought that I was eating at maintenance I was definitely not eating at maintenance but yeah when I figured out what my maintenance calories should be I had to reverse from about 16 1700 calories up to 2130 calories which was very daunting at first and I was absolutely terrified of weight gain but in fact what ended up happening was I had more energy I was performing so much better in the gym that was when I really started hitting PRs and really being able to lift super super heavy and it was also when I started getting really strong because I was doing so well in the gym I had more energy I was able to wake up in the morning without like feeling the need to like constantly sleep in and stuff I just definitely had less of a struggle with my energy when I started eating more food which makes absolute sense because food is energy and before I wasn't getting enough and now I was finally feeding my body enough and my body was feeling absolutely great what I personally did was I went up 50 calories every week until I finally hit that 2130 then I stayed there at maintenance for I think I did about six weeks at maintenance and besides the increased energy and the fact that I was feeling a lot sharper I also was able to repair my relationship with food because I was able to understand how everything has its place and can contribute to one of your macros so there were nights where I was like pretty close on carbs and I would have a sweet craving so I would have a couple of Oreos and I would hit calories with those Oreos and also hit carbs so that was a big thing for me to learn was that I could definitely still eat fun foods and have it still have a positive impact on my nutrition for the day now I'm not saying that I ate a whole sleeve of Oreos to hit carbs that's not what I'm saying at all I'm saying that I ate really really balanced throughout the day and then at night I wanted to have something a little sweet and I knew I had room for it so I went for it without any guilt because it actually ended up helping me so being able to eat at maintenance and tracking my macros and seeing how all kinds of foods not just good foods impacted my macros really really did help me to no longer fear foods which was a big thing that I've been struggling with for years so I feel like my relationship with food is so much better in fact today you guys will see 
see that. I'm gonna have room to have one of my favorite treats today, which I'm really excited about. And you guys will see, it doesn't feel like I skimped out on any of my meals so that I could have that treat. All meals that I'm gonna have today are full wholesome meals that truly will fill me up. So I'm not starving myself just so I could get that treat. It just so happened that after factoring in all of these full complete nutritious meals, I had a little bit of room. So I was like, great, I'm gonna have this treat. And then finally, when it came to reverse dieting, the thing that I'm sure most of you guys are curious about, did I gain weight? I actually lost about three pounds by increasing my calories. And the reason why that happened is because my metabolism was getting prepared. It was performing the way it should be performing. And because of that, it evened out my weight a little bit. So I'll put a before and after on the screen. The first photo shows me right before I reverse dieted, I was really, really struggling with my weight. I wasn't able to lose any weight and I kept pushing my calories down lower and lower and lower. And it was doing nothing because my body's metabolism had adapted to eating at a very low calorie range. And it was just doing absolutely nothing for me and my energy was shot and then the next picture is of me right before I went into this cut so at that point I had reverse dieted I was eating more calories than I've ever consciously tried to eat in my life and I had been eating at those maintenance calories for about six weeks at that point so yeah I'm definitely very happy with that I think also working on my gut health probably helped with that as well so I think you just kind of have to take a look at your own individual circumstance and just kind of figure out what will work the best for you but for me those steps definitely helped you can see it in my body and you you could definitely tell in my energy so now at this point I'm about two weeks into my calorie deficit the first week I started out with just going down hundred calories so that was basically just taking out one of my snacks and this week I've been eating at a deficit of about 200 calories which at that point I was going in and adjusting little things here and there in my meals and this was really the week where I had to just kind of like let go of that one-to-one -one gram of protein per pound of body weight and allow myself to go a little bit lower and I feel just as good. So I think that this is definitely a good level for me. So here's the before of me right at the start of my cut where we left off on the last before and after and then a photo of this morning and I'm definitely noticing a lot of changes in my body. I have lost weight on the scale. It's not moving super fast because I only want to do a slight calorie deficit because I am still trying to build muscle. So I need to get in enough calories to build muscle, but I need to be in enough of a deficit to lose body fat, which means it just might be a little bit of a slower process on the scale. But body wise, my main aim is body recomposition. So the scale doesn't matter as much as these progress photos. And I'm so happy right now so far with what I'm seeing and this feels so much more sustainable and I feel so much stronger than I ever have before any other time that I've tried to lose weight. So I'm definitely loving it. Another thing that I've been doing, you guys have probably noticed my pedometer, I've been tracking my steps, just trying to be more mindful of keeping my body moving throughout the day. And sometimes that looks like getting smart to stay five, 10 minutes longer at the park than normal or parking a little bit further when I go to the grocery store or run errands or just tidying some stuff up while I'm watching TV instead of just sitting still. Just small little changes like that just to see myself get a little bit more movement in. I don't aim for 10,000 steps per day. There's been studies back and forth that I'm not gonna get like super into, but essentially 10,000 steps isn't a necessary hard number for everyone, but there is a range that I aim for and the range that I try to get is between six to 8,000 steps per day. Some days I go way, way over. Like last weekend when I went to Dana Point and I did a shoot with Michelle, I think I hit like 12,000 steps. So some days I'm gonna get more, some days I'm gonna hit in that range and I feel really good about that. Like I'm not beating myself up, trying to pace in my living room back and forth at 11 o'clock at night because I'm trying to hit 10,000 steps. Like I think this range is sustainable. It's doable and it's one of the contributing factors that is showing progression in this journey so I'm gonna keep it there I'm definitely happy with it but I'm gonna go ahead and get some work done I've been talking nutrition non-stop for like the last 20 minutes or so so I'm gonna get some stuff done and then we will regroup for breakfast don't mind the top change I was just filming a TikTok, but I am gonna make breakfast and I put that in quotes because it is 12 30. I just start my day really late so my day's really skewed so truthfully let's call this meal one. I'm gonna do some protein oats with some sausage so for that and I've shown this before I'm not gonna show like the process to make it but I will show you guys like the ingredients for it. I use the Kodiak protein oatmeal this is the maple and brown sugar one shout out to Kara Denise here on YouTube and also on Instagram. I discovered those through her. And then I do just like a little bit, like half a tablespoon of brown sugar because I cook up some blueberries with the oatmeal and you just need just like a little bit of sugar just to get the berries to start caramelizing and stuff. And then I have my breakfast sausage. These are the chicken breakfast sausages from Trader Joe's. I think the brand is like Emma Lou or something like that. They're the ones that I showed in my Costco haul. 
and then I also do some whole wheat sourdough bread. I cannot taste the difference between the whole wheat sourdough bread and regular sourdough bread, although I am learning through like different nutritionists I follow. Honestly, the difference between white and the wheat is possibly pretty negligible. It kind of depends on who you listen to and like the research that they back. So honestly, what I really learned is at the end of the day, just eat what works the best for you. Who cares if it's white bread, wheat bread, whatever. But I think this one does have like an extra gram of protein compared to white sourdough bread. So that's why I just go ahead and gravitate towards the wheat one just to get that literal one extra gram of protein in. And then just like a little bit of butter on the toast. And then that is it. That's how we make it. So I'm gonna get that going and I'll show you guys the end product. Back from my walk with Spartacus. I'm all changed for the gym. The set just got it. I can't remember. I think it's Shein. I don't know. And then I, I'm always wearing this freaking pump cover, which I actually am using as a pump cover now. I actually do take it off in the gym and just work out in my sports bra again. It's been a nice spring feeling. But anyways, I got a new package in from Amazon. This is for the gym. I could have used this yesterday, but this will be really effective for tomorrow because Today is pull day, I'm working on back and biceps, and I don't need these for that, but I finally caved in and I got some grips to help me with RDLs specifically because my glute and hamstring strength is really, really, really outpacing my grip strength, even though I have actually a really good grip strength, like my forearms are like steel right now, but it's still just outpacing it. So I got some Versa grips. These are the ones that like most people recommend. I got the extra small, which I was like concerned about. I tried to measure my wrist. I hope I did it correctly, but okay. Yeah, no, these will fit. Oh, that's way too tight though. I like pulled it super tight, but okay, perfect. So this will help me grip the bar when I'm pulling a heavier weight. Really like these. I got the black and gold one because I was ordering through Amazon. They didn't have as many cute colors as if you go to the VersaGrip website, but I was too impatient to want to wait for delivery through VersaGrip. So I just did it through Amazon, but yeah. So I will be using these tomorrow. Really excited about these. But okay, it's time for me to get to the gym. I don't think I'm gonna bring you guys today. So we will reconnect after I get back back from my workout and Trevor's home as well so if you guys hear the TV he is entertaining himself he did turn it down but I'm just saying if you hear the TV I'm just gonna clean up some dishes and I'm gonna start on my I don't call it a lunch it's well this one in particular it's just like a post gym little meal today I am doing my regular protein smoothie so I'll just run through that really quick but I've started pairing it with a little turkey pesto wrap that is so good it's perfect for like the days when i just want to be really quick i don't want to have to deal with a lot of prep or anything like that literally the most prep i have to do is cut a tomato and i think i, I can live with that so let me just put the dishes away and then we'll get started on my little post gym meal okay so none of this is really new except for the vital proteins collagen i started adding in a scoop to this just to beef up the protein so now this smoothie gets me like i think 40 two grams of protein or so. I do this, as always, my Dot Fit pre post workout and chocolate. It's my favorite, it's so good. It literally tastes like a chocolate milkshake, you guys. Some frozen spinach and then frozen berries. So I'm gonna blend that all together and sip on that while I make my wrap. So little pro tip, I was running into an issue with the extra powder from the collagen of this not blending too great so I just start with one scoop of my pre post and then that's when I'll go in with the water just to kind of get it going and get some liquid towards the bottom of this because what was happening was the liquid wasn't able to reach the bottom so there was like nothing to help the frozen berries blend now I'm gonna go in with my second scoop one scoop on my collagen and I love doing the collagen because it's just like flavorless. It's a great way to add in just like a little bit of extra protein. Actually, not a little bit. This has 20 grams of protein. So it adds in a hefty amount of protein. Mmm. So good. Wow. It's like a chocolate berry milkshake, you guys. 
try that out sometime. It's really good. There's a reason why I've literally shown it on my channel for years. But anyways, I'm gonna make my wrap. So what you need for it is, I really like these flat out light Italian herb wraps. These have, if you're counting macros or anything, these are 90 calories. They have 10 grams of fiber, which is amazing. I mean, that's not a macro, but that is like nice to know. Sorry, Spartacus is talking to the neighbor's dog right now. 22 grams of carbs. I would like a little bit more carbs than this, but still nice little chunk there. And then seven grams of protein. Oh, and then also 1.5 grams of fat. Start out with one of these. Then I take the best Kirkland basil pesto. And I guesstimate I do about a quarter cup of this, probably a little bit less than a quarter cup, but I do enough to spread it all over the entire wrap. And then this is like a little trick that I use whenever I need to kind of figure out how much I'm having of something. I don't necessarily like measure it out with a measuring cup, but I kind of like put it next to it just so I can get like a decent guesstimate of how much of something I'm having until I can get really good at just eyeballing it on my own. Then some oven roasted turkey breasts. I do a full serving, which is three slices. Damn, okay, I have to improvise. <laughs> my Roma tomato was moldy, so I guess I'm just gonna do like three of these little San Marzano tomatoes in here. I prefer a Roma tomato because I can cut it flat and this rolls up a little bit better, but these will have to do. I'm so sad my tomato was no good. Here is what it looks like. And just roll her up. Oh no, I lost a tomato. And then this is the trick that I do with the paper towel. Then I just pull it up a little bit, about halfway on the paper towel fold the paper towel in and then roll it back so that I have a little wrapper for it. Makes it just easier to eat. That is my little wrap that I eat along with my smoothie for after the gym. Sometimes I'll also do like a farro salad and do that with a fair life protein drink or something like that. Most lunches I do some kind of protein smoothie with a salad or a wrap or something and that usually is my biggest chunk of protein for the day so. Mm. It's so good, guys. So simple, so quick, but really good and really good macros on this too. So it's hours later, and I mean hours. I know that it seems like that smoothie with that tiny little wrap wouldn't be enough to hold anyone over, but like every single time I finish that, I'm always like, oh, I'll probably want to snack in a few minutes or so. And then like half an hour later, it hits, and I am so full for literally hours. It's completely unsuspecting with that. I think it's just because. Again, there's so much protein in it that it just takes my body a few minutes to digest it and really understand what's going on. And once it does, it's like, oh, we're super full. So it's going to be a very late dinner tonight. And I'm going to show you guys my new go-to for, well, dinner in general, but especially like if I'm low on protein for the day. Today I'm not, so I'm just actually going to go over in protein for the day, which is great. It's totally fine. It's still within range. So I'm going to make a lemon tuna broccolini pasta. Very simple, really easy to make in terms of something that you have to cook. Obviously it's not as quick as if like I ran out to get Chipotle, although Chipotle is not even open right now. So that's not even an option. But for this, I'm going to use protein pasta. As always, you guys know, I eat a lot of pasta for dinner because I like to use this protein pasta a lot. It just gets in what I need. Then I'm gonna need some broccolini, lemon, and then tuna to make sure I get a ton of protein in. I'm using the seven ounce can. So this is technically two servings of tuna, but it's still only like 90 calories. So sorry, battery cut out, but 90 calories in this can with still 18 grams of protein. So if you're counting calories and macros and you're low on protein for the day, tuna is like one of my favorite sources for that. Then I'm also just gonna need some garlic salt, some pepper, some olive oil, and then also some garlic, but I use the frozen garlic, so I'm not gonna pull it out until I need it because I need to start with the pasta first. So I'm just gonna salt up the water real good and then cook the pasta just the regular way you cook pasta. Obviously, I don't have to show you guys how to make pasta. You get it. So we're just gonna move along in this recipe. So while the pasta is cooking, I'm just going to start prepping out the ingredients. First thing, is the broccolini. I just cut it into like bite-sized chunks. Set that aside. That's good. And then actually that's the only prep that I really have to do. Everything else is already 
kind of prepped out. So once the pasta is done, we'll get into cooking the rest of the stuff. So the pasta is probably a couple minutes from being done. So I'm gonna get started on the rest of this. Just some olive oil. And I've showed this a million times. I will show it a million and one times, but this is the garlic that I use. Highly recommend if you hate prepping garlic. It's frozen. You can find it at Trader Joe's. Just because the jarred ones, they always have like a taste to it. That just throws me off. So I prefer this one because it tastes like fresh garlic. So I'm actually going to do two cloves, which is two cubes. And go ahead and add in broccoli. A little water came with that, but that's fine. So I'll help it steam up. I'm actually going to put a top on this just for like a minute, just so that the broccoli can steam. I want to do it too long or else it's going to get too soft. I think this is looking really good. Beautiful color. Garlic smells amazing. Just gonna go ahead and pop in all of this tuna. And personally, I like to break the tuna up a lot just because I feel like when it comes out of the can, I mean, this is the chunk light, so if you want it like flaky right off the bat, I would just buy the flaky one, but since this is the chunk one, I have to kind of like break it up a little bit. Just, I feel like it's a smoother experience in pasta when tuna's flaky. A little salt. Pepper. Then to dress it, got some lemon juice in here. And just kind of let this sit and cook in all the flavors just for probably a couple of minutes. I definitely don't want the tuna to overcook or anything, so just enough so that the flavors kind of all meld together. Now let's cook for a little bit, throw in the pasta. Mix this all up. Trying to pick up some of this garlic that's put to the pan. Oh, someone knows that there's tuna. And then if it feels a little dry, just go in with a little bit more olive oil at the end to just top it off. I went ahead and turned off the heat. And beautiful. And that is dinner. Super quick and easy in terms of something that you're cooking. And just really, really good macros in this. You got carbs, you got good fats, and then you got your protein. And then bonus, if you have a dog, you get this little thing left over. Sit. What a good boy. Look. Yes. Enjoy. And for my drink, I'm just going to grab a Topo Chico. We finally got a case, so... We are fully stocked up. Finished dinner. I always forget how big the portion is on that meal. It's so much food, which is wonderful. But I've just been chilling and watching Below Deck Med and just want a little something sweet before I go to bed. I did mention earlier that I was gonna get to have a treat today. I had worked it into my macros, into my meal plan and everything. So tonight I am gonna have a little half cup of my favorite ice cream, Thrifty's Chocolate Malty Crunch. You guys, this is, like, if you want to see me super thrilled, surprise me with this because it's my favorite. So I actually have been really loving putting it in this little espresso cup. And then I do the same thing where I'm not going to, like, measure it out by a cup, but I do want to get better at eyeballing it. So I'm going to take out this little half cup, which actually volume-wise is pretty close to this. It's probably a little smaller than this, so I wouldn't fill up the espresso cup all the way, but I just kind of keep it next to where I'm scooping just so that I can kind of eyeball the serving. If it was like a day where I had, you know, gone crazy, maybe I like went on a hike and stuff, I wouldn't mind going for like a bit of a bigger scoop of this. I just always kind of listen to my body. If it's telling me it needs more food because I just had an overly active day, I'll do it. And then maybe just adjust later in the week if I need to. But actually I'm pretty full. I just have a little bit of a sweet craving. So that's why I'm going ahead with this. And also I was looking forward to it. So it's my little ice cream in my espresso cup. But yeah, see, even on a calorie deficit, I'm having ice cream, I'm having a huge bowl of pasta. I feel like I've definitely learned that weight loss doesn't have to be restrictive. Even if I like 
decided to cut another 100 calories. I could still eat stuff like this. It just takes a little bit of planning and thinking ahead. I will be completely blunt with you guys. None of this was going to work unless I reverse dieted first and fixed my metabolism. Your body can't recognize when you're in a deficit if you always eat at a deficit. It's going to think that that deficit is your new maintenance and you can easily be stagnant or gain weight when you're eating on what you think is your deficit. So as much as it pained me and as hard as it was to be patient and reverse diet and as much as it scared me to start eating more calories I'm so grateful that I did because I never would have thought that I could be on a deficit at like 1900 calories in the past that would have sounded like the max amount of calories I should be able to eat in a day even if I was trying to gain weight but here I am eating at that number to lose weight and it's so much food I feel full I feel fueled I have a lot of energy I'm ready to go I'm not falling back into a binge and restrict pattern like I used to do before this has just been so much easier on me I'm enjoying myself I'm not scared to like go out with my friends even though I'm on a calorie deficit just because I know I have a lot of room I forgive myself a lot more and I have a better understanding of how different foods, including fun foods, I don't like to say good or bad foods. I've stopped labeling foods as bad. No food is bad. Everything has its place and you just eat it in moderation. So I can still eat fun foods like this and still be getting results, which I love. So as hard as that reverse dieting was and as tough as it was to be patient with it, I mean, the work has just paid off and I'm feeling really great eating my favorite ice cream while my body is going through a recomposition, which is the goal. So very happy with that. Mm. But anyways, this video is getting very long. I've done a lot of nutrition talk in here. Again, I'm not an expert. This is just stuff that has worked for me, but it is all stuff that I've definitely taken from people who are fitness or nutrition experts. I will link a couple of TikTok accounts that I really love down below if you guys are curious about any of this stuff, but I'm going to finish my ice cream so that I can go to bed. So I love you guys. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.